So we invest into equities and private equity and have done so for many decades now. In fact, that's been the primary focus of the trust really since the mid-1960s. So we're very much a, a growth equity product. My expectation is that that will be the focus of the trust in the years ahead. And the reason for that relates really to our overriding objective, which is growth in capital and income. And equities, we think, are well placed to deliver on that objective in the long term. If one looks to other traditional assets like fixed income, government bond markets, or indeed credit markets, yields are low, suggesting that future returns there will be low. And they're unlikely to provide much by way of diversification benefit to equities actually in the event of risk off or uh, stress in markets. So we th don't think there's a lot of attraction there from a long-term return perspective or indeed diversification. That said, we're pragmatic and if opportunities do arise in either the private market space where we have the ability to allocate capital or indeed in public markets, then we'll look at those opportunities in the context of our objective of delivering long-term growth in capital and income. We're very proud to have a very long track record of delivering not only rises in dividends, but actually dividend payments for investors. We were launched in 1868 and have paid a dividend in every single year since our launch over 150 years ago. So over four decades now that we have delivered consecutive rises in dividends for investors. And in 2021, we expect that we will hit 50 years of consecutive dividend rises. We're very confident that record will continue. The reason that we're confident is partly because of the corporate structure that we have. One of the advantages of being an investment trust in a closed-ended vehicle is that we can provision revenues in the good times in order that we can provide a cushion perhaps when times are more challenging. At the present time, our dividends are covered, which means that we're earning more than we pay out. We've got very healthy levels of revenue reserves, which means that in the event of a downturn, we're very well positioned. So in short, we're very confident in our ability to continue that long track record of dividend rises. And it's a clear objective of the board and myself to continue uh, to deliver dividend rises for shareholders. Our portfolio holds several hundred underlying listed securities and we also have exposure to private markets in our private equity portfolio. Our approach is one of combining focused portfolios which have got very specific objectives, whether that's US growth, value, uh, emerging markets, with other areas in order to provide a diversified set of strategies which complement each other and help to smooth the return profile for investors. Now, clearly, volatility is uh, an ever-present feature in equity markets, and it's likely in 2020 and, and beyond there will be periodic bouts of volatility. And one of the best ways to protect against that is by diversifying across a range of different approaches, styles, geographies, and sectors. And again, that's very much our underlying approach. Recently, we have taken the opportunity to allocate to some strategies which are a bit more defensive in nature. They provide some good downside capture in the event that there is a stress event in markets. At the present time, however, we are relatively optimistic and we're certainly not battening down the hatches expecting a prolonged bear market in equities. Well, we're very much focused on the long term and that long term objective of growing capital and income for shareholders. But clearly, we do look at the short term as well. Our expectation had been that the bull market in global equities was going to persist essentially for as long as the economic cycle continued, because the economic cycle is really supporting the corporate sector in terms of earnings growth. And we felt that the valuation backdrop for equity markets was not going to be an impediment to further progress. In fact, while well, 2019 saw a number of concerns about US recession, obviously we got over those concerns. And coming into 2020, it looked very much like we were enjoying a, a Goldilocks backdrop where 
growth wasn't too hot as to spur inflation and rate rises and wasn't too cold really to tip over into recession and an earnings downturn. So it was a quite a supportive backdrop from a global growth perspective. Now what's been happening in markets just in the very short term has really been a focus on the coronavirus and the potential implications, not just from a human perspective, but from an economic perspective. And there's a tremendous amount of uncertainty as to exactly how widespread the, the uh, virus will become and what the economic impact will be. And frankly, we've got no great insight into that. But one I think can reasonably expect more by way of economic downside than we had previously anticipated. There'll be disruption, supply chain disruption for certain sectors and certain areas will clearly be more exposed than others, the travel sector, airlines, cruise ships, and so on. But I think one has to look beyond that short-term risk in markets to the long-term opportunities. And I think what's very encouraging is that our underlying managers continue to find very good opportunities in both the listed space and importantly in private markets as well. So again, short-term volatility I think is to be expected, but the backdrop remains fundamentally supportive for our exposure.